Welcome to the Mount Pleasant Podcast, featuring discussions and interviews about the people, places, and events that make Mount Pleasant such a special place. This is the Mount Pleasant Podcast. I'm your host, Brian Cleary, and all thanks to the great people of Mount Pleasant Magazine, I get the honor and the privilege of introducing you to Mount Pleasant, the people who make it such a special place to do business, to work, and even to live. We're introducing you to Mount Pleasant's best on the Mount Pleasant Podcast. As someone who lives in Mount Pleasant, it's a great place to live, but it's a great place to work, a great place to visit. And now we're getting some, shall we say, affirmation on that from people all across the country. I'm Brian Cleary. Thanks so much for joining me in the Mount Pleasant podcast. This is where the pages of Mount Pleasant Magazine come alive. And today we're joined by the Honorable Will Haney, the mayor of the town of Mount Pleasant. Mayor, we are an all-American city for the first, for the third time in Mount Pleasant's history. Yep. Take me back a little bit. It was just a couple of weeks ago. You were out in Denver, Colorado, and presented the award. What was that like for you and the group sitting there waiting to find out whether you won or not and what happened at that moment that you were actually known and we knew that we were an All-American City Award winner? It was some of the most anxious moments I have had. We went out there five years ago. I'd only been mayor about eight or nine months. And, um, and we, you know, you, you compete for this. You apply nationwide. They narrow it down to 20 finalists. And this year's finalists included New York City, uh, San Antonio, Mesa, Arizona, Charlotte, um, and then Decatur, Georgia, who also won. We won. Fayetteville, North Carolina won. Davie County, North Carolina won. There was a real Southern sweep. Five of the 10 awards were between the Carolinas and Georgia, which was pretty cool. Mm-hmm. But we, we knew we had a strong application. And this year's theme had to be um, what you are doing and how it affects youth primarily But of course, by extension, the whole community. And we all know, you know, in a a family, what happens with your youth happens to your family. So it it wasn't just about youth, as as I'll get to in the details in a minute. The interesting thing here is that when we went out there five years ago on awards night, which is Sunday night, you've been there Friday, Saturday, Sunday, you're doing all this stuff, you're competing, you're putting on um, two showcases before the one that is the final one that is judged. So you're always on, you know, you're on stage, you're performing, you know how that is, you're, you're a professional. And when you're always on, you, you start getting a little more uh, competitive. And so five years ago, when we had the big awards and all 20 cities are sitting in there, the very first award they gave was to the town of Mount Pleasant. So yeah. for the next hour and a half, we're just sitting there having a good time. This time they gave us our award last. Oh, so we sat there for over an hour and we had 40 people out there and we took these huge displays. We, we were very professionally done. And, and it was it was a, a it was pretty, actually. It, it was it was commercial grade, like like if you were at a trade show or something, it was that good. And we were watching some of these small counties win and they didn't have the production or the people that we had out there. And we were just thinking, you know, maybe Mount Pleasant's not their cup of tea. Maybe they're more inner, inner city focused or something. But sure enough, we got the last award and the, and the place erupted. And, um, and they told Christiane Farrell, our deputy town administrator, who was in charge of this whole project. And I want to I give her a shout out. She did a wonderful job. They told her afterwards that we were the crowd favorite. And they wanted to hold us for last and uh, for the last award. So uh, what, what do you say to that? Thank you. Uh, <laughs> but we were we were on the edge of our seats. Um, so many people. We we had over 40 people out there. Our staff raised between 40 and 50 thousand dollars of private money to get us out there. And um, it was a huge production. And we just thought we can't come away without an award out here. Well, as you were saying that story, I was coming up with the line, well, ah, it's all because they were saving the best for last, but evidently that's the case. So good for us, although, yeah, that had to be pins and needles. You're just sitting, waiting, waiting. So let's go into a little bit of the details. Obviously, sure. you have a lot of great information and reasons that Mount Pleasant would be an all-American city. Right. But give us the highlights. Mayor, tell us the one, two, or three things sure. that you think really put us over the top. In, in, this, in this case, in this competition, for this year, you had to focus on what you were doing to make the lives of the youth in your community better. And I wanna tell everybody, cause I've already gotten a bunch of comments like, oh no, that's all we need is more people moving here and 
higher real estate prices. Well, it wasn't, we weren't judged on just what a great town we are because we know that. I mean, we've got the scenery, we've got the water, the beaches and Shim Creek and Patriots Point and all these wonderful things. That's not what this was about. What we were judged on for this, and we had primarily um, four things. Um, one was the inclusiveness in our workforce of youth and adults with special needs. And so we started off our presentation about Miori's Pizza. Everybody pronounced it Migliori's, but the G is silent like in lasagna. And, um, and you know, they, they built that restaurant uh, for Don Miori's sister to have a productive place to work and so they could hire people like her. She's special needs. Jill Marie is her name. And so um, we started off with that and then we segued right into uh, Just Be, uh, Layla Luna, who helped us get designated as an autism friendly city. And she told her story with her daughter there about before they moved to Mount Pleasant, they were in a pizza restaurant in California where they used to live. Her son has autism and he had a sensory overload moment and a meltdown. And the manager told him to leave. You know, imagine telling a family, you got to, you got to leave the restaurant instead of having a little sympathy and a little uh, empathy there. And then we had Debbie Antonelli, uh, international, uh, a national, you know, fam nationally famous broadcaster with ESPN and other networks for basketball. And from her driveway in Mount Pleasant, she has raised the nation's consciousness about Special Olympics. Her son Frankie went with us and Frankie has Down syndrome and Fra Frankie's uh, money line was this isn't about disability. This is about possibilities. And that was that was a real winner. And then we um, also had, and the thing that brought tears to the judges' eyes and people in the audience was when Nancy Shipman and her son Jack uh, talked about losing Creighton in July of 2016 uh, to an opioid overdose after having been prescribed the pills, after having a, a lacrosse injury, and how primarily youth have had great trouble coming forward and saying, I have this problem, I need help. And, and in all of these, um, what we showed, Brian, was that this is not the government looking down on our citizens and saying, who are we choosing to help? Everybody in town knows most of these people and, and what they have done. This rose from our citizens up and the town said, how can we help? And so we demonstrated in the rest of our program after they introduced and spoke the programs that we are doing to work with them, like our police um, wrote, and, and this was long before this, this award, they wrote what became the statewide model for dealing with the opioid crisis. It was adopted um, statewide. Governor McMaster got on it years ago and they spread it around the state and, it, and it's been great. So I want to stress again, this was not about how great the government of Mount Pleasant is. This is about great things our citizens are doing and how we as a government said we need to help and we can expand this. And I think it was that synergy as much as anything that won us this award, Ryan. Podcasting has exploded in popularity, especially local podcasts. As of 2022, 62% of Americans have listened to a podcast. 38% have listened in the last month. 26% in the last week. The podcasting audience is booming with no signs of slowing down. Call the podcast hotline to be featured on these podcasts or to receive information about podcast marketing. Call 843-530-0. 403 or visit carolinapodcasts.com. You're listening to the Mount Pleasant Podcast. It's a celebration we've got going on today on the Mount Pleasant Podcast, celebrating the fact that Mount Pleasant, for the third time now, has been designated as an all American city. Mayor Will Haney is joining us. So, Mayor Haney, I'm a resident of Mount Pleasant, proud of that fact. Good. What does this mean, the all American city designation, in terms of the residents, the businesses? What does that mean for us in Mount Pleasant? It, it is a real mark of, of distinction because there are only 10 given nationwide. And um, when I first became mayor, I, I knew that we had the banners out from 2010 because we've gotten it in 2010, in 2018, and 2023 now. But um, for business and industries that are looking to bring jobs and, and invest in capital in our, in our town, they will know that we must be doing a lot of things right uh, to have earned three of those now uh, in 13 years. Uh, I'm not sure how many others have done that but i know that three it's kind of like winning the masters if you've got three green jackets you're pretty good if you've got three of these awards in 13 years you're doing you're doing a pretty good job and the thing is we have gotten those are the only times we've applied 
So every time we apply, we, we get one. But this one especially, I think, is meaningful. Um, it also talks about how our police uh, work. We, we had um, Officer Jean, who competed in the Olympics for the country she was born in, Jamaica, um, twice. And she's a school resource officer. And we had her and uh, Deputy Chief Tyrone Simmons talking about how they cultivate relationships with young people. They get rid of the fear of the badge. And they're not there to enforce the law. They're there to protect the public and, um, and how they're working with our youth to uh, come up and, and, and be police officers in their, in their hometown. So that was, those were like the five big legs of our table. And, and I think that if you're looking from outside the community to relocate a business, um, to move here or something like that, you're going to look at these things because these are very, very deep quality of life things about who we care about and who we work with. And, and by golly, like, I mean, we're a leader in the opioid crisis and Debbie Antonelli is, is affecting the entire nation by shooting free throws in her driveway in the town of Mount Pleasant. And that's a town we can all be very proud of. It's uh, your second win as mayor, so congratulations on that. You Thank talked you. about the big group, though, that went out there, more than three dozen people, all yes. walks of life from Mount Pleasant representing. Is there anybody else? Obviously, we'd love to name every single person, but the, is there anybody else you want to mention in terms of, boy, this person really stepped up and, and helped oh. out to make us win this award? I, in addition to the ones I just mentioned, uh, Michael Cochran, the immediate past president of the um, of the Mount Pleasant Chamber of Commerce spoke on behalf of especially the autism friendly designation um, that the Chamber uh, of Commerce jumped on that and the number of businesses and I forget I think it's three dozen have signed up to become autism friendly businesses and they'll have a, a logo to display for that so families looking to shop because we know if you have a child with special needs it's not just that child. It's your whole family. You know, you've got to be able to shop for shoes and clothes and sports equipment for all your children. And it needs to be an environment that's friendly to your whole family, including your special needs child. And, and this is just a community embracing those who need us the most. And Michael um, was able to go out there. We had our singers. I don't want to forget, we weren't judged on our cultural presentation, but we had a group of of singers who sang the spirituals from the Gullah, our Gullah heritage. And we put front and center the Gullah heritage um, of our community. And, and we're recording this on Juneteenth. And, you know, our settlement communities are visible, living reminders of people's first taste of freedom, formerly enslaved people. And we, and we put that out there and, and the people loved it. When we had our booth at the, um, I, I guess you'd call it sort of like the cultural fair. People came around and learned about your community and all that. When I walked into the exhibition area, there were all 20 set up. The line for hours looked like Starbucks on a Monday <laughs> afternoon. People were five people deep. They were giving away pralines. We were giving away those palmetto roses, you know, that, that mm -hmm. the weavers make. That, that dates back uh, to Western African heritage and everything. And people loved it. And our banner, if you've seen the picture, on one side it said sweet grass, and it showed sweet grass baskets and sweet grass in the wild. In the middle it said sweet tea, and it showed all things southern. And then on the right it said sweet life, and it showed kayaking and hiking and sports and everything. So we had sweet grass, sweet tea, sweet life. And there were, there were people five people deep at our, <laughs> at our booth and they were getting the pralines and we had a vote on whether you pronounce it pecan or pecan. Uh, <laughs> pecan won, so I was in the vast majority of that. It is pecan. And um, so we really put Mount Pleasant's best foot forward and, um, and I was very proud. The singers help. Um, we took Lynette out there and she, she was the centerpiece of our presentation, weaving the baskets. And our theme was that we weave together as a community. We weave together for opioids. We weave together in, in love and cooperation on uh, special needs, on, uh, on, on all of this. And so we knew we had won the award because they, they do it with three lines. They say, this community does this, does that. And when they said, this community is weaving together, that's when, if you look at the video, when we erupt, because that was our theme. So I wanna, I wanna thank the weavers and the singers and the Chamber of Commerce. It really was a display of everything that Mount Pleasant is. 
it comes through in our conversation today. And anytime anybody has met you, I think your passion for this town. Obviously, so many of these people, somebody like Debbie Antonelli, who's flying all over the country, but yes. she has that passion as well. And Layla Luna in terms of autism. And when you talk about that and, and Mount Pleasant being really the first community in South Carolina to be autism friendly, it's a very important thing. But this is something that's that's fairly simple, but it does make a difference. That's exactly right. And all you have to do is look at it through the eyes of the family that have a special needs child. And, I, and I've got to admit, I'm, I'm, I'm uh, prejudiced in this because I don't have a special needs child, but my adult daughter is a behavioral therapist certified to work with children with autism. So when you learn about just how difficult the day-to-day -day things are, like like Layla's experience, where is there a place we can eat so that if our child with autism has a meltdown and, and, and starts just, you know, having, having a total meltdown, we won't be asked to leave. Imagine how that affects your other children, you know, and, and, and all of those things. And so um, this, this came out and, um, and this is the city that we are. And what I love, uh, Brian, is that we didn't have to make this an issue and push and push and push. All we had to do was give it a platform in the chamber and businesses. And like you saw on this trip, everybody in Mount Pleasant just loves this. I'll give you an example. Um, twice in the last month, other mayors and I have been asked to speak to chambers of commerce from like peer areas. One is the Hampton Roads area in Virginia, and the other is northern Kentucky, uh, places where it's not just one city or one county. It's like our tri-county area and a million people and, and all of that. And, you know, we talk about drainage and we talk about roads and we talk about taxation and attainable housing. When I mention these things about inclusiveness for people with disabilities, I get an applause every time because it's a hard issue and people immediately say, we want to be that kind of community. And I don't mind if people want to be the kind of community Mount Pleasant is. I want to be, I want us to be the leader in that and others to say we followed their example. And I'm, as you can tell, I'm just very proud. As well, you should be Mayor Will Haney, our guest here on the Mount Pleasant Podcast, as we celebrate the fact that for the third time, Mount Pleasant has been named an All-American City. Now, Mayor, you talked a little bit about the benefits of that and, and just how it makes us look good. And hey, if we're looking good, we're feeling good. Yes. Does it go beyond that? Are there maybe economic benefits or other benefits mm -hmm. as well that we've been designated an All-American City? Um, I, I don't have a, a case in point of a national business that relocated here because of it. But I would bet if they are looking around because the, the new emphasis for economic development, it's not to have a business park in roads and drainage and three phase power and loading docks. The new thing is quality of life and values, community values. And they say um, now those that, that take companies and corporations around, and I'm very in tune with that, with the boards and commissions I sit on, regionally as mayor, um, that they look at the values of your community first. Well, look look what we've got to say um, that our community cares about and embraces um, your families, our special needs people, those dealing with uh, opioid addiction and everything. And we're doing it with genuine love and genuine empathy. And um, I would I would bet my future, you know, as a as a person, a politician, whatever you want to say, that that will make a difference in some people's minds on whether to locate here and bring jobs here and invest in this community or not, because we obviously do a lot right. We've got very low taxes. Uh, we're investing in infrastructure like crazy. We're fixing drainage. We're way out of, ahead of the fix on that. And uh, we got great recreation and great quality of life, but we also have a real big heart. And it's not just about the ones who are the most successful and have the most money. It's about the ones who need us to wrap our arms around them and embrace them as a community. And doggone if that wasn't proven by that award in Denver last weekend. So now that we're a three-time All-American City winner, Mayor Haney, will there be a celebration of that or will individual businesses, anything that you're encouraging folks to do? Because, hey, we might as well stick our chests out a little bit and be proud of the fact that yes. we've been named again an All-American City. Yes, we're going to do several things. Um, one is down at Waterfront Park. Um, one night that we have the Friday night at the movies and, and we'll recognize and let people see the trophy. I mean, this belongs to the people of the town of Mount Pleasant. This is not just the government's thing. We'll be putting the All-America City banners up again with all three years on them. Um, and then the, the Miori's who own their wonderful restaurant 
uh, right at Highway 41, um, they're going to have all the people that made the trip and their families to a big celebration there. And we're, we're just going to we're just going to enjoy it. I was in the airport with them. I don't know if you've seen the video. We had a five and a half hour time in the airport and we just decided to do the little rowing thing. And um, the Maori said, hey, uh, we're going to host this. We're going to have this team and we're going to do it at our restaurant. And we're going to do it as a family. I'm not sure. We haven't set the date on that. It'll be after the 4th of July. But yeah, Brian, this is the kind of thing you've really got to savor. You got to savor the right. moment. Um, I made a little speech to our team in the room before we went on stage for all the marbles. And I said, and I, and I mean this, um, whether we got the award or not, and we all know we did, that's why we're talking today. The real challenge and the one that reveals our, ca our character is our resolve when we come back to keep doing this and do it more and do it better, not just put the award up and say, well, you know, wasn't that nice. We, we've got to keep doing this. Well, it goes back to the point that you've made, and I, I'm glad to hear you say that because some people in your situation or might go, hey, this is because we've got this great council or we've got this great mayor, but really we've got great people in the town of Mount Pleasant. That's exactly right. I hope we have a great council and a great mayor. I think we have both of those, <laughs> but that's not, the, that's not the point of this, and that's not what the, um, the award meant, and um, I think this shines a light on our citizens making a difference. They're the ones who told their stories. And, um, and you can watch it online. I think it's on our, on our town uh, website and Facebook page. You can watch as those stories were presented. And they are the heroes of this story. We came alongside. We didn't start these stories. These are their stories. But we are working as a town to make this everybody's story and to have all 93,000 people in Mount Pleasant embrace these stories. And the stories don't end here. They're going to continue on. That's exactly right. And, um, you know, Wake Up Carolina continues to help with the opioid crisis. They're getting our next five years of the opioid settlement to have a peer support counselor there um, so that you don't have to come in and talk to somebody with a gun and a badge. You, go, you get to go talk to a peer counselor about opioids. Debbie Antonelli is going to be doing 24 hours of nothing but net from a driveway in Mount Pleasant. And um, the Maoris are expanding their restaurant and going to be doubling their staff. They're, you know, they're going to keep doing that. And, um, and now the next phase with Just Be, with the autism friendly, is businesses are going to get trained and they're going to get that little decal and you're going to see that popping up everywhere. I can't wait for the next delegation of economic developers who come through our town and are looking at locations to see that little B and have them know what that means. And, um, I, you know, I'll, I hate to sound competitive, but I'll put that up against any town anywhere that that's who we are. It's good to know the mayor of the town has that much passion that you bring to it. So, Mayor Haney, if somebody sees you on the street, they can shake hands, high five, whatever, and celebrate with you. Yes, absolutely. Um, if you're a resident of Mount Pleasant, this is your award. This is your town. Um, these things will outlive all of us. I was telling the folks on the trip, these are legacy things. You know, however long our lives are or however long we're in these positions or even running these organizations, every person on there will look back and say, we were part of something big that started and has blessed and benefited people for, for many, many years, just like the, the spirituals that were sung and just like the sweet grass baskets that have been woven, things that stay around for years and bless people. Those are the things that really count in our lives. And we all got the chance to do that. In every issue of Mount Pleasant Magazine, the pages have the stories of the people, the businesses, the things that make Mount Pleasant special. We do the same here on the Mount Pleasant podcast. And we're so proud that once again, the town of Mount Pleasant has been named an All-American City. Your second time, Mayor. Will there be a three-peat, maybe? <laughs> uh, you, I don't think you could pull this off two years back-to-back, -back, but um, two years from now, we, we will take a look. I think we know how to do it, and um, why stop now, right? Absolutely. If you live in Mount Pleasant and you're watching our podcast, feel good about it because, as the mayor said, this is really your award. The folks of Mount Pleasant, the residents of Mount Pleasant, we're proud to be a part of an all-American city. Mayor Haney, thanks so much for, our, for your time today. Thank you so much. It's been my pleasure. And congratulations to everyone in Mount Pleasant. Feel good about it. You are living in an all-American city. Thanks for spending your time with the Mount Pleasant podcast. Your community, your podcast. 
Listen to past and future episodes at mountpleasantpodcast.com.